A new book looks at how New Zealand legal cases might have been decided if the judges in those cases looked at the facts through Māori and or a feminist lens. Tom Fairley attended its launch in Auckland and here's his report. In 2003, Alistair Brooker, upset over police search warrants, took matters into his own hands to protest by approaching Constable Fiona Croft at her home after she finished a night shift. Woke her up by knocking on her door for three minutes. Three minutes, the length of an average pop song. Three minutes, three minutes is still going, still waking her up. And then she, when she was, he told her to, and I quote, piss off, he retreated to the curb and started singing songs to her uh, with placards. After the police were called, Mr Brooker was charged with intimidation. But a district court judge replaced that with a lesser public order offence, and he was later acquitted after taking the matter to the Supreme Court. Auckland University law professor Janet McLean says one of the judges suggested Miss Croft was a tough cop and wouldn't have been intimidated despite her reporting that she was. The same judge described Mr Brooker's singing to her as a serenade. When to me the message appeared to be much more chilling. I know where you live. I could find you any time. I know when you were working. I know when you're home asleep. In a new book, Feminist Judgments of Aotearoa New Zealand, Janet McLean cast a feminist lens over the original case and, in her own version of the decision, argues the original charge of intimidation should have remained. It's one of 25 cases spanning the last century in which academics and legal professionals have re-examined judges' findings from the perspective of a feminist or Māori woman judge. One of its co-editors, Marmory Stevens from Victoria University, says it challenges the myth of judicial neutrality and shows how a different decision can be made from the same information. Inevitably, there are different ways in which to view that material. Mm. There's inevitably a different way in which to interpret that material. And inevitably, there's a way to bring the woman's story or the woman's perspective to the forefront um, in a way that's actually completely reasonable. She says it's an exercise in imagination to see how different the law could be and she hopes it prompts more inclusive judicial decisions and legal argument. With the recent revelations about sexual misconduct within the legal profession, Ms Stevens says the book is perfectly timed. Many of the judgments speak to the kind of sexual harassment and sexual discrimination that actually these young people have been experiencing and not just young people but women at all ages at all levels of the profession why is it we have so few female partners still with so when the vast majority of graduates are female mm. what is the reason what's holding the advancement of women up court of appeal judge justice helen winkelman officially launched the book in auckland last night at the last of four events throughout the country She told the gathering it was one of the most important books of recent times, and as a reminder, appointing women judges isn't enough to combat bias, as judges need to consider all perspectives. Justice Wynne Kelman says the onus is also on lawyers to take the law forward. If the arguments aren't made, if the evidence isn't led, then the law won't develop. And I can say, having been a first instance judge for 10, actually 11 years before I went to the Court of Appeal, and having been an avid reader in the 1980s and 1990s of feminist texts, I was hungry. I have been hungry for the arguments. I've been hungry for the evidence. But the arguments have not been made. We haven't seen cases formulated in the way they've needed to. Justice Wynne Kelman says the book can also help the law reflect and protect others whose voices aren't always heard, such as the LGBTQI community and those struggling with mental health. For Morning Report, Tom Furley.